G'day guys, it's Stux from the TrueNAS forums. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating TrueNAS's snapshot functionality and some good ways to take advantage of it. ZFS snapshots are a TrueNAS superpower, and by setting up tiered snapshots, you'll be able to recover from malware attacks and other data accidents that occur in the future. I find it's a bit like having an undo key for your data. Later on, I'll show how you can recover data in various ways with snapshots, and then I'll show how to set up a tiered snapshot schedule, and then your TrueNAS can have snapshots enabled too. But firstly, I'll go over a little theory on how snapshots actually work. If you'd like to skip ahead, then the times will be in the description below and my preferred snapshot schedule is above. But in the meantime, why not give me a like and subscribe while I get things rolling. A snapshot represents a read-only copy of a dataset or Zvol. Snapshots can be created quickly and they consume almost no space when initially created. However, as the contents of the dataset is updated, the snapshot will diverge retaining the original disk space that is no longer used by the dataset, but still referenced by the snapshot. The disk space will only be recovered when the last snapshot referencing the space is deleted. For this reason, we do not want to keep snapshots indefinitely. Additionally, there is a performance cost incurred when listing and maintaining snapshots. And for this reason, we want to limit how many snapshots we keep at any one time. And finally, in order to predict the space used by snapshots, which can help us recover space, we do not want long-lived overlapping snapshots. This is why we use a tiered schedule. This is a small VM that I'll be using for today's demonstration. As you can see, my host name is Gaia. Now, these are some data sets that I've created to simulate how you may have your own data set set up. I have a Docker data set and a Jailmaker data set. I also have ISOs and media. I have replicas where I replicate other systems to this system. I have a scratch data set which contains data sets that I don't really want to be snapshotted or backed up. I have a share data set which is the primary file share and I have a time machine data set which is used by Mac OS clients for backup purposes and a VMs data set which contains Zvols used by virtual machines. What I will start by doing is taking a manual snapshot of my pool. We'll call it manual with the current time and date. It's recursive and we save that. And now we have a snapshot. Now, if we look at manage snapshots, you'll see that we also already have snapshots coming in from another replication. But if I do a search for manual, you can see all the snapshots that we just took. You can increase the number of snapshots per page to 100. And you can then sort by date created or by used. And you'll see that really there's not much to do with the single snapshot. If we look at the share, we can see that we have a single snapshot, which is currently referencing 1.5 gigabytes of data and is using no space. When it comes to snapshots, the used space is really a measure of the unique data referenced by that snapshot and not by any other snapshot. So now that we have a snapshot, we can look at the uh, share on Windows. So here's a Windows virtual machine. What I can do is I can go and view my share. And there it is. Now, if we go to properties and look at previous versions, and you'll see that we have a previous version. This is essentially that snapshot we just took. I can then delete a file. I can delete my really important novel. I can edit this important document and show that it's been crypto locked. I can recover this very important document by simply going to a previous version and clicking restore. Yes, I do. And now the document should have been recovered, and it has. But I might want to recover the other document. So I can go to Properties again, Previous Versions, and then I can open that version. And here we see the three files, and I can recover my novel. And there it is. Now, that's interesting, and it's quite a powerful feature. If I go back to the TrueNAS interface, I can actually take another snapshot share. Create snapshot, cursive, save, and and that will now show up as one of the previous versions. Now that's very cool. But let's go behind the curtain. If we go to the shared data set here, and then we go to .zfs slash snapshot, then you can actually see the actual snapshot directories. These are essentially magic uh, read-only copies of the data. You'll see in here we have the snapshot as it was, uh, 5.13, and here the new version. 
Now, if you don't see these, try refreshing, try going back and out. But what you may find is that you have a permissions problem on your share. And that can explain why the volume shadow copies or this previous history might not be working. Now, what we can do is we can also do the same thing in Mac OS. For instance, we can go connect to a server and we can bring up the share. There it is. But you notice we can't see the, uh, the true NAS ISO, which I deleted previously. Now, Mac OS doesn't expose the previous versions as neatly as Windows does. What we can do is go to the magic ZFS directory by going to folder and then doing slash volumes. And then we will be able to see our share. And there we can type dot ZFS slash snapshot. And we should be able to see the snapshots. We can then go to the older snapshot by double clicking it. And there we are. We're now inside the uh, snapshot and we can copy out the TrueNAS scale ISO if we wanted to, or even copy it back to the existing directory. Now, if we go to the terminal, you can see that the same trick works. But if we list the directory, you'll see that we can't see the .zfs directory, but it is actually there. There it is. There are the snapshots. You can press tab to complete inside a terminal. 23. And there's the ISO. That also works in TrueNAS. So if we go to the shell, we might CD into our pool, then maybe into our jail maker data set, maybe into our jails, and maybe into our jail demo data set. Then we can go into the ZFS directory here, that result. We can go into the snapshot directory, and then we can go into the, the manual snapshot we took. And you'll see that we have our config and our rootfs system here. So we can get access to any of our jails data inside any snapshot. So if we go to the snapshots view for this share and we sort by date created, we can see our oldest snapshot is using 1.5 gigabytes. What that means is this snapshot uniquely references 1.5 gigabytes of data. And if we were to delete this snapshot, then it would release 1.5 gigabytes of data. If you're using remote replications, you always want to delete the oldest snapshots first. By bringing up a view of the storage, we can see that we currently have used 40.63 gigabytes on this small VM. When we delete this data set, it will only work if we don't have the snapshot open. And there we have the data set deleted. If we refresh, you can see that we've now recovered the space. Going back. Alternatively, we may just want to roll back a data set. In which case, we can look at the snapshots. By zooming in, you have the option to clone to a new data set, which you could perhaps share out and mount as a different share to inspect the data and perhaps recover separately. Or you can roll back. Rollback is a very dangerous option in a way. It will revert the data set to the snapshot that you've selected. Be very certain when you do a rollback that that is what you want. So if you have new intermediate ch child and clone selected, then the rollback won't happen if there is anything to be lost. But if no safety check is performed, then the rollback will happen. And it is like whatever happened after that snapshot never happened. The same thing works with Zvols. So for instance, say we have this Ubuntu Zvol, and in the meantime, the disk of the virtual machine has gotten corrupted. What you can do is manage the snapshots, clone to a new data set, then you can go to the virtual machine itself. You can edit the disk. And we can adjust from the original disk to the clone of the snapshot. Now we can test the virtual machine to see if our snapshot solves the problem that we're trying to fix. And since this virtual machine seems to be working just fine now, what we can do is stop it. And when it stops, we can go back to the disk, edit the disk back to the original Ubuntu, back to our snapshots. There's our snapshot, and we can roll back and confirm the rollback. And in fact, we can delete the Z vault if we want. And we should be able to confirm this virtual machine is working just fine.
Okay. So that shows you some of the ways that you can recover data using snapshots, but it's predicated on having the snapshots in the first place. So it may be a good idea to have automated snapshots. Before we set up the snapshots, I'm going to point out that we have a time machine data set here that we don't really want to be snapshotted. We also have a scratch data set and a replicas data set. We don't really want snapshots of these. Now, going to look at the data protection. The first thing we'll do is we'll add our very periodic snapshot task. I call this minutely. It's not actually minutely, but it's sort of hexy hourly. And I find it simply to refer to it as minutely. So what we'll do is we'll select the whole dozer data set, which just happens to be the name of this pool. We'll set the lifetime to two hours. Then we will exclude dozer slash replicas. You can press tab, dozer slash time machine tab and dozer slash scratch make it recursive and then what i like to do is name the snapshot scheme minutely this will help to keep things organized and it will also prevent accidentally deleting the wrong snapshot when you disable other snapshot tasks the other thing that's useful is to name the snapshots after the system that makes the snapshots this makes a lot of sense when you begin replicating snapshots around. In this case, I've named the system Gaia. Now, we want this to happen every 10 minutes. So we go to custom schedule. And then this by default is on hourly. You change the minutes here to be an asterisk, which will make it minutely. That's really too often. So instead, we do slash 10. And that star slash 10 means every 10 minutes in Chrome. And here we can see we are now snapshotting Dozer recursively. We're skipping over these data sets and we're keeping the snapshot for two hours with the naming scheme Gaia Minutely and every 10 minutes. Now, what we want to do is not allow empty snapshots in this case because we're going to be taking this snapshot so periodically that we don't really want to have to inspect each snapshot to find the snapshot with the change that we want to look at when we want to use it. But in general, when using snapshots that you will be replicating, you do want to allow taking empty snapshots. Otherwise, the replications can fail because the snapshots are missing when it goes to replicate a sub data set. The reason that we're excluding data sets rather than specifically setting a snapshot task for each data set that we want to snap is because when you add another snapshot task and another snapshot task and another snapshot task. If you were doing four or five snapshot tasks per data set, then you very quickly end up with a combinatorial explosion. And it's much better, I find, to simply have three or four snapshot tasks where you exclude the data sets you don't want them to operate on. So that's now our minutely snapshot task. The next thing we'll do is create our hourly snapshot task. Again, select your pool. We set the snapshot lifetime to two days in this case. We exclude our replicas data set. We exclude our time machine data set. And we exclude our scratch data set. We do a recursive snapshot. We update the naming schema to hourly. And then we set the schedule to hourly. This time, since we plan to replicate these hourly snapshots, we will actually allow taking empty snapshots. Next, we add our daily snapshots. Select the data set, set the snapshot lifetime to two weeks, exclude the usual suspects, update the naming schema. This is our daily, and it's already set to daily. Allow taking empty snapshots, do recursive, enabled, save. And finally, we will add our weekly snapshots. Again, the, the, the pool, and this time we will keep it for two months. Again, we exclude our replicas, we exclude our backup data set for Mac OS because it uses its own snapshotting system, and we exclude our scratch. Make it recursive, we set this to Gaia weekly, and we set this to weekly. Allow taking empty, enabled, save. That will give you tiered snapshots, which cover two months of time. Two months is a good amount of time to find something wrong. It means that any data deleted in the current two months will expire after two months, which 
if your pool's big enough, if your churn rate is slow enough, it seems to work quite well. If you require a longer period of retention, then I would suggest adding a monthly task, and then you can keep that for years, 10 years, two years, whatever. The, the good thing about adding the monthly task is that you will only accrue 12 snapshots per year per data set. And that means that you will be able to see which data set has snapshots which are retaining a lot of data, and you'll be able to delete them manually if you so choose. But if you do set a long retention, say 10 years or two years, then you are going to have to manually maintain your snapshots to ensure that you don't fill your pool. I, I wouldn't recommend using the monthly snapshots with massively long retention. It does mean that you could fill up your pool quite easily. Whereas with two months, what you've deleted in the last two months will come back. And it's like having a two month window on your recycling bin and windows. Now, what I can do is show you what this looks like once it's been running for a while. When it's been running for a while, it will look something like this. Okay, that's how I set up tiered snapshots and some ways that you can use snapshots for data recovery. In a future video, I plan to demonstrate using these snapshots with remote replications for backups. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, or would like to see more of this type of content, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.